It is September 28th, 2024. I'm Chris, and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else out there, this is the future of photography. Jeremiah and me. That's just it. The two of us today. Yeah. That's it. That's it's all you get. That's it's all you a two for which actually is going to work well with what we have to demonstrate. <laughs> well, the, the th interesting thing is um, that uh, Adrian had a lot to say about what we want to talk about today, but um, we'll we'll let him fill in his side of the picture next week. So, um, yeah, though, though his side of the picture may kind of emerge out of um, what we have to demonstrate so. well so so here 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 it, here's the 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 thing about today's episode it will not be a lot about photography um so if you came here for the photography we're sorry it it's tangentially about photography um it's i don't know i mean i mean photography is about tech and creativity right um and what we want to talk about today is also a bit about tech and creativity possibly i guess um, yeah, though I would I, I would argue that what we are going to uh, discuss today is a foundational layer that it, that basically uses text. Um, but uh, I can see in a few weeks, months, um, that the foundational layer will be built upon and uh, generating. Um, audio from visuals <clears throat> will so, emerge possibly yes so here's here here's what this is about well, it's it's about ai in general it's about uh, a a system that has the ai community a, a bit a buzz right now i mean it's in every everyone talks about this thing right now <clears throat> and it's a it's a tool that has been around for a bit by Google, it's called Notebook LM. And Notebook LM, in its uh, place where you can upload a document and then ask questions about that document. Yeah, for example, like you could um, upload a series of documents, contacts, uh, articles, um, and even meeting notes that right. Uh, that are focused on a certain subject. And two months later, you may have a refreshing meeting on that coming up or something that's evolved, but you're forgetting the names of the people right. who were in the meeting or specifically what was the salient points of it. Mm -hmm. You go to Notebook, Notebook LM, ask it a very specific question, and right. it will generate data from what you have uploaded. So it's, right. it's quite interesting that way, for, and it's been in beta for a while. Right, and for those watching, um, it's on the screen here. Notebook in that system, you get a screen that allows you to upload sources, and that could be a PDF, a text file, or even audio, like an MP3, as in like a podcast or something, um, or a link to a website or some text. It allows a lot of things. You can upload like 50 different sources for one notebook. And then, yes, you get to uh, talk to it, basically. So I what, what I did here is I uploaded a link to our all episodes page of thefutureofphotography.com, right? So this is what it looks like. If you go to all episodes on, on our website and you get these uh, short excerpts of the individual episodes and it's a, it's a great place to do a quick search for something, uh, for some keywords and things. Um, and that's all I did. I gave it that link and then starts pulling the source in and the first thing it gives you is an overview a summary of what you what what it has here and the, the summary here says the future of photography podcast is a discussion based podcast that focuses on the innovative ways technology is changing photography and so on and so on so it grasped really well what uh, what the show is about just based on the descriptions of um, 300 and where are we now 17 episodes and then it allows you to ask questions. Like I could, for example, ask it, um, when did 
Jeremiah join the show? It's like a chat interface. So you ask it a question. I said, Jeremiah joined the podcast sometime between March 25th, the date of the episode 120, the date of episode 130. So not sure how regularly you, you showed up, but that's probably the first time that you were mentioned in the, in the episode notes. And uh, you have a little link that then goes to that place in the sources and shows you um, where the information came from. So in general, it's, it's a, I'd say it's a research tool. It's a tool to help you organize information. It's a tool to... Yeah, it's a very sophisticated filing system. To work that, with data in a new way, right? Yeah. And generally personal data. So anything that that encompasses data writ large is available to you to kind of do a deep, quick dive into it by right. asking queries, responding, and following up. I mean, that's what it's been. And it's still in beta now, but... Um, it is still in beta, and uh, they, they keep adding features. Like, for example, you can now just link it to give it a link to a YouTube video and give you a summary about that, and you can, you can ask questions about that. So um, pretty cool, pretty nice. And then on last Tuesday, Jeremiah, you posted a link um, and brought it to, to the attention of, of myself and Adrian. Um, but not just that, <clears throat> but you also pointed out a new feature that they have. Yes, we were we were having a uh, offline, um, uh, you know, discussion uh, on messages. Uh, so we were back and forth between Germany, the United States, and England, mm -hmm. all about um, this new feature, which <clears throat> we were um, kind of discovering. I was certainly blown away by what what I was seeing. Um, familiar as I am with Notebook LM. And uh, after a few um, kind of maybe a half hour, 20 minutes of mm -hmm. kind of text discussions about what it means, how we felt about it between me, Adrian, and Chris, I just basically did on messages a um, uh, file save and uh, conversion to PDF, which I immediately uploaded. And maybe two minutes later, we had a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to explain that, right? So, so they they added a feature that will create out of the information that the ends. And I'm not talking a podcast script. No, it will record a podcast with uh, two speakers. It, initially, right now, it's a, it's a male and a female voice, and they uh, they discuss the data, the sources, whatever is in there. And uh, they ends up being somewhere between six and ten minutes long, usually. And it uh, and they opine on it as well. It's not they don't just feedback what is in the text. There's a back and forth um, kind of quality to it that enables one to uh, think that these people, virtual as they are, are reflecting deeply because they refer to this as a deep dive into the subject um and it's extremely compelling so here let, let, let me just play this so based on the episode list and uh ex excerpts of the individual e of 317 episodes um let me just play the beginning of that discussion just to give you an idea what this is like okay here we go oh needs to be switched over okay now we are ready to play have you this. ever like been trying to get the perfect shot Oops. and you just wish you could see a little bit more outside the frame oh totally like you're trying to get a peek around the corner or something exactly it's like why can't my camera see what i'm thinking well get ready because that's just one of the mind-blowing things we're talking about today right we're diving into the future of photography. And we've got a ton to unpack. We've gone deep into the future of photography podcast. All 318 episodes. Yep, 318. We're giving you the VIP tour, highlighting the coolest stuff. The stuff that really made us stop and think, whoa. Let me let me just pause life? this here. So, so 
there's two people talking about us. They sound like like real, really real. They have all the all the nuance that a that a human being would have when talking, discussing something. They're well spoken. They're eloquent. Um, they certainly know the topic. They will, as language models do. But in general, this is a bit. It's a bit mind blowing. In in both a positive and a, and a, and a scary way, right? Yes, uh, because <laughs> part of it is because they have a very conversational rhythm. In other words, they'll go, uh, they'll take beats, they'll do yeah. pauses, and and um, and react to each other, and and so the nature of it is not like we are used to in um, those artificial language models, which basically are rote uh, narrative um, reading a script. This is very fluid. And so the fluidity itself creates a draw that makes us feel the reality of this discussion and those people. Uh, yeah. It's, it is, it's awesome, but it's also scary at the same time. The reason we titled this episode is, um, yeah, I can, I can, <laughs> I can see you here dropouts. Um, there's, there's a bit of an audio glitch here, but, um, the recording sure. seems to work okay. quite well. So sorry, sorry if we have a few little glitches, um, today. Anyway, um, the, the title of this episode is Are We Obsolete? And I think that is one of the questions, uh, among many other questions that came up uh, while we were uh, doing this um, and discussing this. And and then it turned meta, very meta. So what we did is we, uh, you pointed me to it. I, I uploaded some, some information about the future of photography. Then it discussed this uh show and and then you saved that pdf of the entire uh message chat that we had about this system and it was like this almost an existential crisis of like oh my god what does that mean for the future of podcasting and and then i uploaded that into the system and asked it to um to give us a, a, a podcast summary based on our existential discussion. Let, let me try to play a bit of that. Hopefully there are not too many glitches okay, here. Okay, so are you ready to dive into some seriously wild stuff? Always up for a challenge. What do we have today? We're, we're jumping into the AI world, but not how you'd expect. Forget those articles, you know, the ones that try to predict the future. Right, always a bit hit or miss, those. Exactly. We've got something way more raw a private conversation between two creators freaking out about AI, like, in real time. Oh, wow. So we get to be flies on the wall for their oh, crap moment. It's going to be good. It's like witnessing the AI revolution firsthand. Their raw reactions, the worries, pure gold. Can I can already tell this is going to be fascinating. Yeah. There's something about that unfiltered perspective that's yeah. so valuable. You can really tap. Uh, and it goes on for, like, seven more minutes um, about us freaking out. Um about this tool. So you you probably get the idea that this is um it's it's in the general vein of generating things as in generating pictures using Dolly or or Midjourney um but also generating voice which we've had for a long time but uh, generating a conversation about a topic and um doing a fairly good job at at getting things from the sources in there um kind of scares me yeah and it, the Doesn't thing it? is it it just offered up opinions um in other words considered opinions based on what it read like it talked about how we were fearful or uh, exuberant or what we didn't say i am exuberant it just picked it up by the tone and nature of our conversation so 
it, it, it kind of does a really good job emulating what a human would do, right? You, you read your sources, you do something, and then you ask, you ask to put that together into an essay of sorts, and um, it'll probably take you half a day to get this right. And this thing does it in two minutes. So the, the difference is stark. Um, and it, for, for me, it opened up a question about what is authenticity, uh, and again, again, you can you can co you can directly apply the exact same questions to photography, as in um, the the is this picture real? Is this authentic? Is has it been taken or has it been generated? Um, in this case, it, it, again, this is meta, very meta. What is authenticity? How how do you tell if something is authentic? Do you really want to know if something's authentic, or is it if it's cool, it's fine? This is, this is really at the heart of what this episode is about. Um, because the, the, we know from this particular uh, observation this week that, you know, within a few weeks, months, uh, there will be a, 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 just a bevy of, of voices to choose from. Uh, it's limited to two voices now, but it will be probably expandable. So, so um, behind behind that is is an engine that has its prompt, and the prompt says probably says something like, "Create an engaging conversation between a man and a woman." Here's your voices, and uh, uh, make input, make, yeah. make it into a podcast episode, right? So it's it's going to get more robust, more thick, more rea more appearing, more and more real. This is the worst the system will ever be. Yeah, that's important uh, to yeah. understand, right? This is this is not gonna get worse. At all, right. rather the opposite. So, so you know, just just as a parallel, because a lot of um, photography festivals, where you um, upload your pictures or submit your photographs, and uh, you know, there are prizes giving out, given out for you know best nature photography, best street photography. Um, galleries are struggling with this, and and. We, we also are very interested in, in knowing or assuming, if it matters, what the line is between what would be considered, say, pure photography. Um, is there such a thing? Uh, I, I assume that if you take a pinhole photograph with no lens, so there's no lens aberration affecting the um, the. the basically how the uh, light is uh, interpreted and you put it on a piece of film and process it without any manipulation, contact print it, because that is exactly the size it was recorded at, that would be considered possibly pure photography. As soon as you do anything to it, even a slight burner dodge, you have shifted from what you perceived as reality when that picture was taken uh, into a manipulated photograph. So what is the line um, um, over which we then go, this is uh, manipulated, artificial, over-edited, etc. cetera? Um, because very soon, if not now, uh, people uh, are submitting, in fact, I, I read about this this week, that somebody, um, submitted a real photograph, real in quotation marks, but a camera-based image to an AI um, festival. And I think they won because it was, it was so good, like the opposite happened last year. So, so um, apart from the existential crisis, I think there, there is a, there's an organization that is working on, on trying to solve this whole conundrum right now. And, uh, it's called the the C2PA, the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authenticity. Um, and one thing that uh, comes out of that, and it, it has a wide industry support. It's I think Adobe driven, but um, it's out in the open source, um, the, the the algorithm rhythms and everything. Um, a lot of companies are beginning to investigate it and to implement it. And the first camera manufacturer that has implemented it is Leica with the um, M11P. That's the first worldwide, um, the first camera ever 
who implements what's called uh, content credentials. That's the name of the system. So what they do is um, they have a like a cryptographically signed certificate uh, or or signature on the metadata on the image, and when and and it, and it gives you that that well proof as much as proof is possible that this is an authentic image that has come from a camera. Um, and then the tools to work with these photos, um, first and foremost, Adobe, because they are um, like part of the of the chair committee of this whole thing. Um, they have now uh, begun to implement this in Photoshop and in Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic yet. Um, so when you when you take one of these pictures and you edit it in Photoshop, and depending on what actions you do there, mostly the AI based actions, then it will add another entry into that it's like it's like a chain of uh, of of things that happen to the picture and you can then uh, verify if that picture has been made and if it has been edited with ai including by the way media organizations the bbc for example and meta are and microsoft and google are part of that uh, too so um, they will implement that checking that validity checking into their social media, for example. And, and as you pointed out in our discussion, maybe we need that in microphones soon. The, the thing <laughs> is, the thing is, this this uh, C two P A the the content credentials at this point I think extends to pictures and video, um, and I would venture exactly in that direction. It's like I, I would say it it probably needs to be part of every bit of media. Now, I have a question. There. I have a question, a challenge, as it were. I take a picture from my Leica. Mm -hmm. I import it into Photoshop. And I add a little bit of fog. Is, is that AI? De depends on if, if Photoshop internally defines that as an AI manipulation. Well, exactly. What, oh. I mean, the question is what triggers, uh, what triggers it? that? Let's just say I use Firefly. Okay. If you, so if I you generate something in Firefly, also in Dali, um, that has oh, the okay. has the content credentials already Im implemented. But for example, I shoot a landscape, a barren landscape, absolutely beautifully lit, naturally. Capture it, take it in. I feel it's kind of missing something, so I put in the distance a very small figure mm -hmm. in the right corner of the horizon, just somewhat silhouetted against the. Um, side-lit mountain. And it really transforms it because it gives it scale and you can see the awe or feel the awe of this little figure and a huge landscape. Well, does that or will that, we don't know the answer, but the hypothetical question is, will the entire image then be called an AI image? That's really the question. In, in other words, how much is too much? What is that line over which we cross to cancel out the purest sensibility? I'm, and that's a very good question. And I'm not even saying that uh, that the content credentials system is the end all be all. That's probably not it, but it's a it's a start at least. Um, it's in it, the the one thing that that I came across that I found really interesting is um, people saying. Yeah, but if I strip the metadata from the image, then <clears throat> that whole content credential system falls flat on its face because then it doesn't get marked as AI manipulated and so on. Um, Maybe. And I thought I thought long and hard about this. And well, first of all, early days, right? Mm -hmm. This is um, definitely um, not everywhere right now. It's just beginning to to be rolled out. But in the future, I, I, I venture I guess uh, in the future, every camera will have this chip inside to mark a picture as authentic. Well, um, the, here's the the, let me interrupt that because that is the problem. When they say this picture is authentic, that's a misnomer because there's a lot of processing involved oh, totally. in the camera itself. Totally. But if they said this image began began as a camera-based image. That's another thing, because no matter where you take it, that was the inception, rather than this began as an AI image, which possibly was re-photographed 
with film. So to... I thought long and hard about um, what this will do to us as viewers looking at photography, listening to a podcast. Um, I, I, by the way, I can guarantee we are real at this moment. This is not uh, a produced thing. I'm not going there. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a trust thing. I think it comes down to trust. So at one point in the future, possibly, potentially, and I'm not saying it's good or bad, I'm not judging, um, I'm, just, I'm just extrapolating from what we have now, I would venture guess that in the future, uh, things that do not have this official stamp of it's authentic will be trusted less by people. Because I, dis I completely disagree with that, Chris, completely. I think we are getting into a gray zone wherein all of that, in, all of that data is going to be ignored. And as you know, the two of us, we use classic, what we would call pure photography from, you know, plate cameras all the way to, you know, complete AI generated imagery. We have a deep dive right across the level. And I think where we come out is the image itself is what's important. The, the tools that you use are one thing, but the power of the image to evoke an endorphin rush, a call to arms, a, a new appreciation, whatever it is, the power lies in the image itself. Um, so I do feel that at a certain point, we are getting there very quickly, that people will no longer give a shit about whether an image is pure. Maybe at festivals they will, maybe in art schools they will, but the general population will react to an image And most of that reaction happens very quickly, whether it's on a newspaper um, headline that one reads on one's phone or screen quick, you know, about a, a war crime. Is that real or not? No, but the evocation of it is what draws the attention. You think that, you think that even in journalism, where it kind of feels more important than in art, um, that it is authentic? Uh, yes, but but you I think, think even our even there, it's it's it doesn't matter. No, I think it does matter to me personally, yeah. but I don't think it will matter to a generation that grows up with a blurring of what's real and what's not, because nothing will be trusted as real. You might be right there. Anyway, back to Notebook LM. Um, so. What does that mean for the future of <laughs> podcasting? If you just if you just dump in some sources, let let let's say we we want to talk about topic X on this episode on an episode, and we just throw in a few articles and PDFs and pictures and things. Um, uh, we type up a little like everyone types up what their point what what their stance is towards this topic, and then uh, generate a podcast by Jeremiah, Adrian, and Chris um, that is 45 minutes long and it sounds like all the other episodes. What, <laughs> what, I mean, the, the thing is, of course, on the one hand, this, it would be awesome to have that, right? I'd sound so much better and more, more um, coherent oh, and than by I the usually way, do. Shall we say that you don't need a microphone, any processing, the audio quality It just drops is... out, yes. It's really good. So on the one hand, it would like it would be like, hey, awesome! I can take a day off and still have an episode. On the other hand, we are quickly getting to a point where everyone on this planet has access to tools like this. So we are going to see tons of yeah. really polished content. So that, that, that will devalue uh, something. The, this might, and, and Adrian had a good point when we discussed this. He said he, he, we should lean into our quirks and our, our weirdnesses, our whatever weird speech patterns and things um, like that, just to, to be the, the human and not the, the, yeah, the, the robot, fact, right? In, in fact, um, if you uh, listen to the podcast, um, the... The LLM, 
discussing itself through us <laughs> meta, meta, uh, meta. <laughs> did, did uh, tell us at the end that it's a real virtue to stay human. So our new sign off will be stay human. Let me let me let me play let me play the last minute of, of this uh, thing of, of our existential discussion. Real connections. So instead of AI curated feeds, it's back to actually being with people. That's the idea. Face to face, real conversations, the stuff AI can't replicate. Which brings us back to podcasts, <laughs> right? If that's the future Adria is predicting, where does that leave us? It's a good question, and honestly, one I'm still wrestling with myself. But I think what Chris and Adrian teach us is that it's not about being afraid of AI, it's about understanding its limits. And recognizing what makes us human. Exactly. AI might be able to mimic a lot of things, but it can't replace that genuine human connection. The kind you get from a conversation, from shared laughter, from knowing that there's another person on the other side of the microphone. It's about valuing those moments of real connection, those shared experiences, that AI can't replicate. Absolutely. And maybe that's the silver lining in all of this. AI might be pushing us to appreciate those human moments even more, to seek them out, to cherish them. So instead of being the end of podcasts, maybe AI is the push we need to make them even more human, even more connected. It's a hopeful thought, isn't it? That even in a world increasingly dominated by technology, it's the human connection that truly matters. And that's something worth fighting for. Thanks for joining us on this wild ride into the heart of AI. It's a conversation that's far from over, and we can't wait to see where it takes us next. Uh, it, okay. <laughs> this, 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 this makes me feel all sorts of weird feelings, right? Because we did not say, we did not have the opinions that they discussed. In, in other words, their summary of what was something that felt invented. And here you have the machine... <laughs> telling us to retain our humanity. Uh, the, the inability for us as humans to process that right now is palpable. And those of us who've been working in image generation, you know, we've always been astounded and impressed and, and, and really embracing of so many of the tools. When we heard this, we were just shocked. In, in I, I I was I was dreaming weird stuff that night because it like it really made me work. It really made me ponder what the heck does that even mean? And but, again, this is just early days, right? Yeah, because it's, remember when Dali came and everyone said, "Oh, it's the uh, decentralization, the democratization of art." Not really. Everyone <laughs> could be in. A, no, <laughs> we found that out fast. <laughs> In other words, all you have to do is write a prompt and you're an artist, okay? So you're walking along the street, you're recording a little bit of your opinion about what you're seeing, this and that, this and that, maybe one person, maybe two. You upload it then, you get a polished podcast, you put it out there um, in mellifluous tones, you generate some music from odium and and you know <laughs> and off you go and all of this happens before you even end your walk yes uh, so th there's a lot to grapple with here in terms of um, a for us the the kind of meta of it which is having the really the machine discussing the machine <laughs> and offering opinions on um humanity discussing the machine without being aware that it is a machine yeah doing that uh, so so many levels of meta it's just it 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 makes me it makes my brain swell up inside my skull i mean anyway anyway um we don't have all the answers we have a lot of questions we have um <laughs> we, we are we are a bit we're freaked still, out we're still processing we're still here. in the middle of processing now, now i i'm going to suggest that we take this particular podcast uh, and upload it to the LLM and put the audio in our show notes so that having watched the podcast, you can actually experience yeah. what the LM determined was a seven to 10 minute podcast discussion that Chris and I have had. We will make this one level deeper um we'll go deeper down the rabbit hole so if you check the show notes there should be a link or there should soon be a link with uh these two hosts not us them 
the machine, discussing what we just talked about and maybe taking their own conclusions. Maybe they have an answer. Maybe they have an answer, possibly. Hey, are, hey, 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 AI hosts, are you hearing me? Can you hear me? I want an answer. Please give me an answer. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we could even go deeper. Once we have their podcasts, we can take that podcast, feed it up, and see how I'm it interprets itself. Sure, I'm sure people are doing these chains already. Um, would be would be fairly simple and wouldn't even take long. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to our picks because it's already meta <laughs> enough. Um, you brought us Carl A. Herman, photo I, art. Yeah, I, I, I thought I would get back to sort of in-camera photography. <laughs> Soothing our nerves, good. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, I, I, I chose this because uh, it provoked a discussion, an internal one with me, uh, reacting to what is a pure, authentic photograph. Um, these are somewhat manipulated, but not overly manipulated. Lots, lots of lots of motion, camera movement, yeah. so, um, out so of focus, unsharp right. kind of stuff. Yeah. And so using the optical qualities, using the slowness of the shutter, um, does that present a pure form of photography or an abstraction using a tool? So... Um, I, I always, I, I grapple with what is a pure photograph that has not been manipulated at all. Um, any, and, and what is that? A representation of reality or an interpretation of reality or the addition of other factors within that reality. And that could <clears throat> even uh, black and white photographs are in and of themselves abstractions. So... Cool. It's a question, but his work is, uh, I think, outstanding. I like it, and I want to close the circle by um, by recommending an episode, the latest episode of the Hard Fork podcast, um, which in its second half has a guest to discuss Meta LM, and the guest is uh, someone who worked on it. So. You'll, you'll find out more about this and uh, and maybe something about the future plans of it and it's um, it's it's good because it gives you a bit of a look behind the scenes of um, where where this came from how they developed it what their goal is and uh, yeah it's worth it's worth a, a listen absolutely and worth it's a, a very very good podcast the podcast in uh, itself is great uh, yes because the, the the hosts are very funny right uh, irreverent often and have created uh news about ai uh, over the years mm -hmm. so, so um yeah notebook lm by the way notebook lm doesn't do pictures yet you cannot upload pictures as sources so just yeah. a matter of time though yeah. then you might be able to upload your art and have it critique it for you and so on so <laughs> write a positive review of my work <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or I mean, you 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 need a I don't know, you need a bit of um, let's say a, a blurb for for an exhibition or something for the catalog for the invitation. Problem is, I, I have human critics who are writing kind things, so yeah, until so they disappear, they um, will be gone too. As yeah. as will will we, at one point in time. <laughs> Anyway, enjoy the future photography as long as it lasts and as long <laughs> as we are still ourselves. And uh, yeah. Anyway, we are the future of photography.com. You can find us online. Join Possibly our Discord not the future to discuss. of podcasting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone, thanks for being here. Take care and bye bye. been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.